Today we were supposed to talk about the movie Silence, but Silence is really not what we should be doing right now. The links to the relevant stories are all in the description, and especially a good video by Sidney Watson. So, introducing James, a small boy. He has a father and an insane mother who thinks that the boy should be a girl, because he liked girl toys from McDonald's and was acting like the characters from the movie Frozen. You know, those two things that are essential to one's gender identity. So, in essence, she refers to her son as Luna, uses feminine pronouns, makes him wear dresses and, to top it all, thinks that he should transition to female sex and that he should start taking hormone blockers as soon as possible. There is a story in the Desert Fathers about a monk who meets the devil in the desert. The monk asks the devil where is he going, and the devil responds, I am going to teach your brethren evil, but time will come when us demons will learn evil from the sons of men. My siblings in Christ, that time is now. Both parents and their children are orthodox, though the mother is clearly orthodox as regards to her baptism certificate alone. Gender dysphoria is sort of like modern bloodletting. Diagnosing it and treating it seems like a cure for all of our inner turmoil, whereas in fact it is useful only in minuscule number of cases. Here I will focus on two issues, on the cause of gender dysphoria and the dogmas of postmodernism. I don't consider myself much of an intellectual, so sadly, for all the smart stuff you have to go to Jonathan Peugeot. Here you will only have my ill-assembled thoughts. First, the cause of gender dysphoria is sin. And no, I don't mean the narrow definition of sin as breaking of God's commandments. And I especially don't mean that the gender dysphoria is punishment for breaking of God's commandments. I mean the entire state of humanity. We are born into sin, we breathe it, we die in it, we are drowning in it. It is a forever blossoming choking vine of evil that is ever growing out of and strangling our soul. Absolute majority of us, for absolute majority of time, tend to it very well, even if we know better. This infernal wine is why we get deadly passions of the soul, why we are tempted and, in the end, why we die. Some manifestations of this original sin within us are common to all people. Other manifestations are more particular, and gender dysphoria is one of them. Of course, someone will say, but that isn't fair. Why do I have gender dysphoria while someone else, for example, is just short-sighted? And that's the thing. Sin isn't just. Sin is not there to punish the guilty and praise the righteous. Sin is simply a wildfire. The only cure for sin is Christ and his gospel. But sadly, some roots of the sin will only be obliterated once we arise at his glorious second advent. Second, let me turn to postmodernism real quick. Postmodernism has only one essential dogma, and that is that words don't mean what they mean. Terms like boy and girl become a mere social constructs. However, I would like to add two additional dogmas of postmodernism. One dogma is that anything can be a dogma, but that is only narrowed down by the second dogma, and that is that previous, old, ancient dogmas can't be dogmas anymore. A fact that a seven-year-old boy can and should become a girl is a new dogma. However, it cannot be countered with a dogma that boys are boys and girls are girls, because, simply, that was an old dogma. You cannot counter it with a dogma that a mother simply really wants a girl. That is an old dogma. Postmodernism allows its dogmas only to be replaced by dogmas that are at least just as insane. And that is why, today, we have gender dystopia. As a side note, while I was writing the script, I noticed that I was writing gender dystopia instead of gender dysphoria. I'm pretty certain that I didn't think of it first, even by accident, but it gives a good picture of what this whole issue is truly about.